Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, I'm going to uh, basically just, uh, to you guys, it's probably a pretty simple process I'm showing, but uh, we found that there's a lot of people that real, don't realize the, the power that sits behind QGIS. Um, and uh, we find that more and more. I'll explain to you a bit about um, what we do, and then you'll understand how we got into um, looking at this. One spatial basically, well, we're the platinum partner for SAFE, so we do FME, and we also have um, uh, one integrate, which is our, uh, I guess, rules-based engine. So what we do is always in the background. We don't have a user interface, or we, we manage data, manipulate it, and, and um, clean and store it back into the databases. And we rely on our customers to have their own interfaces to access that data. Um, so we don't get to show pretty pictures. Um, so I'm going to enjoy this presentation because I've got a lot of pretty pictures I'm going to show you. Um, but yeah, we basically, um, that's some of our bigger customers. I think you'll recognize PSMA, uh, Powerlink Networks, people that um, use a lot of big data that's got to be cleaned, as well as the Ordnance Survey. So that's our background, and that's how we got into it. So the project I'm going to show you um, is basically it was between one, sp uh, one spatial, spatial technologies, and Hibs and Associates. Uh, the reason I'm using this one is they were not that familiar with, uh, I mean, what you can do in terms of GIS and what's available out there. So uh, we got QGIS involved uh, to help them do this, and I'll explain how we got the end results in this. But basically the project was, um, they had to uh, move a lot of uh, earth. This is a, a recycle center, center. and um, it was about 10 hectares that we had to fly, and they wanted to see uh, what the earthworks were on a daily basis. Because there was um, suspicion of asbestos, so they need to know exactly where things were picked up and where they dropped, that if they find it, they know where it came from and then isolate that area. So over six months, fly every day. That's, that's a lot of data. It's a lot of processing that needs to happen in the background. So we sort of had to get people on site that does not usually use this uh, type of technology trained up because they're there every day to, to monitor and, and do this work. Um, so. Basically, what they wanted is something like that, is to show where the cut was and, and the full information and what the volumes were for that day. And they needed that report on a daily basis. Now, if you, underst if you understand the whole process behind capturing this information, first of all, uh, using UAVs uh, is a lot faster and more accurate than what a survey could do, and a lot cheaper as well. Uh, that was the other thing. We, we had to train pilots that's on site every day to do the flights um, for us. Um, so that's, that's the results they wanted on a daily basis. Now, um, the normal process for this type of thing would just be, we fly it, we process the, the uh, UAV information, we get the point cloud and aerial photography from that. We'll then go into uh, the GIS, do the volume cut and fill calculations and uh, we generate a report. But if you have to do this on a daily basis, it's, it's time consuming. So we were um, finding ways of automating this whole process. Uh, but I'll talk a bit about isolating. One of the problems is you have large vehicles uh, on site, so you don't want them included in the calculation. So you can't just automate it. You have to either clean the data set or visually check that. And that's the part that we're at, uh, Q just came in really handy that we used it for. So that was the process, um, generating the prod and then create a new base for the next day because obviously after your change, your next day you have that base and then you fly again. That whole process takes time. So how we thought of automating this is um, initially we just used the FME to do the processing for us. So what it, we do the normal flight process, the UAV data, the, uh, the, that night, and then it kicks off a process in FME. So what, what happens is FME goes in, it takes yesterday's base model that you had, 
uh, it compares the two uh, delta flights and then uh, generates a cut and fall, which is basically just the TIFF showing you the difference between the two uh, layers in there. But then the problem came in where we had to isolate those areas because, like I said, um, there might be vegetation change they, uh, in there. There might be vehicles going around. Uh, ponds fill up with water overnight when it rains, uh, which affects the results. So the guys had to go in manually and, and fix this. Now, uh, we introduced them to QGIS and said, well, use this tool so we train them in them and set up the environment for them to do it. Um, and um, the results were, were pretty good. So that is, once we got all that process, you can see there's the noise I'm talking about. These are just containers and stuff they move around. We don't want that as part of the uh, model. And then there's a large uh, vehicle in there that gets picked up. It sees it as a full. Okay. So we need to isolate the noise, what we call, in there. So the models, that the cut and fill models, that's the result. So that's not actually a terrain model, what you see there. That is the actual full layer. In other words, the difference between the model is displayed like that. We just did a uh, shaded relief on it so they can sort of visualize what, it's, what it looks like and identify the noise in it. So what we do is uh, we taught them how to digitize um, in QGIS. Now, again, I said... For you guys, it's a simple exercise, but I mean, they never worked with GIS in the past. So they realized once they started using the tool, the power behind it. And even I find people that do use QGIS don't realize the, especially in the grid and 3D uh, analysis you can do it is really powerful. So we just, uh, it's just the tip of the iceberg with, we, with it that we did over here. Um, we've got samples of where they do a bit more complex stuff in it. So that was the process, and once we've identified the areas, digitized that, that, what they want for that specific fill or cut, we use the zone, zonal statistics. Okay. That calculates um, or summarizes the total of that grid. Now, I've got a s uh, slide later on that explains the math behind it, but uh, I just wanted to go through the workflow. Um, so once we've got this, the sum of that cut or fill, we then, um, so that's what it looks like. So we use the cut model. Uh, uh, the fill is that polygon they digitized around the area they want the volumes for. We run that, and that gives us uh, the sum of the grid. And again, I'll explain if, you, if you're not familiar with grid analysis, what that's about. Um, basically, I have to put that up because I had to warn them we're going to do some maths. Um, they don't care for maths. So the grids we generate, the accuracy out of is, is two centimeters. So you can, um, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty big model. I think it's eight gigabytes, the base, because um, that's the accuracy we get on that whole terrain of the 10 hectares. So what it basically does, it checks yesterday's base model, today's flight, and that height difference or cut difference is the value of that cell, okay, for that two centimeters. So when we do the sum, uh, it summarizes all that, and then we, to get the, vol the true volume, we just take the resolution, which is the two centimeters squared times the value of the cell, and you've got the volume for that, or the cut for that, okay. So that's what we taught them to do, the digitize. It, it summarizes that to that polygon, and then they generate the report from that. There's the math. So once we've got the, the cut sum, you can see in there, we just use the formula, the cut sum times zero, the, the 0 0.2 meters squared. Okay, and that gives us the volume. And then that's the reports they got in the end on a daily basis, it spits that out. So you can see here the cut. So again, we just took the relief and changed the sun so it looks like a cut. But it's basically just of the height difference that you see there. So it looks pretty realistic. But you can see there, there's with, that's what they cut and that's where they dumped it. And they were very, very impressed with that, to do that. But they also, in the whole process, picked up uh, QGIS and this, what it can do. And they realized they can use this uh, everywhere else in their projects and, and in there. 
But again, I said this is, this is a very simple workflow, but the power behind the grid analysis is, is just amazing. And as an extra, we gave them this. Um, in QGIS, we took a, just take a, exported as JPEGs, the models, the base models, and then uh, did a time lapse for them. So they can actually see this is a month's work, how the whole uh, site changed over that month and where things were moved to. And um, yeah, that's about, that's about the whole process. Um, and I, I, I must say, we, more and more people, the more they see what we do with this in QGIS, the, the more people jump onto it. That's it for me. Um, so did you use a photogrammetry for LIDAR for the actual data collection? No, we use a, the, we fly the drone with the imagery and then just uh, run that through Agisoft um, to to get the models or the DTMs from it. Yeah. Did, uh, I was curious, did you use ground control for that? Yes, definitely. Yeah. No, we um, so we survey and because that site was going to run for about uh, six months, we had permanent marks out there that we surveyed. So the only time we had to survey. Or the guys, and again, we taught them how to use the, the survey uh, RTK stuff. Uh, they just paint four marks in the area that changed with paint and then survey. But definitely you have to use ground control, otherwise you, you can't do the comparison. It's too in inaccurate then, yeah. It's, um, sorry. Yeah, it's, um, just on that, um, it's a... Uh, it's something I'm pretty passionate about, is ground control, because um, a lot of guys out there push UAVs with RTK. Now that's all good and fine, you know exactly where your UAV is in the air. However, the pitch roll in your, when you take the photo, is, is inaccurate. So if you don't have proper ground control, RTK is not going to help you that much in the air. I guess you get point blank from your uh, using AJSOC. And Ye yes. Yeah. Yeah. We can um, we can uh, sort of clean up the terrain um, with some advanced software from the point cloud, but our problem was it hadn't had to happen every day, and it was people that's not used to the software, or that that's why we went this way with it. Yeah. Just using um, QGIS just to digitize around the areas you don't want. Clean it in there, yeah. I guess there was, uh, just to follow up, uh, maybe there's new development in there as well. There was this last tools software or you know, utility where you can uh, use some of their processes to filter out uh, buildings and yes. maybe that could be. We, we've, actu we've actually done some projects. Like I said, this is very basic and tip of the iceberg, but we have used the last tools in QGIS, QGIS. to do more advanced stuff as well. Yeah. yeah. I don't have half a day. If I had half a day, I can show you some pretty impressive stuff done out there, but uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, just for a question, um, if, if you're looking at automating some of that, uh, why do you need me? Why not just pipe Because uh, the edgy soft has a, a pipe scripting. I'm just curious. If um, again, it's because it's people that don't, you need someone behind the tool to do it. We were dealing with people that don't do this every day. And it, uh, so we, that part we automate it because it's repetitive. <coughs> we didn't want to burden them doing it themselves. Um, we didn't have time to teach them how to use Agisoft and get in there. They didn't have uh, licenses for it. It's, yeah. But you're right, there's, there's other ways of doing it, but in this case, this was um, the only way we could get it through. Uh, just a quick procedural, like logistic question. You're using, um, that just stop able to automatically detect ground control, but you always have to go to the manual. You can, you, uh, it's, got a, it's got a tool in there that you can print out uh, symbols. So each symbol represents a number and you throw that out. The problem is because it was an ongoing process, we, um, uh, we didn't want to go that way uh, and uh, they got to quickly, because they've got, 
Earthworks goes up until about four o'clock, and we can't fly too late because you get shadows over the uh, images which affects it. And um, so they had to be quick, survey and get flying. So all these things uh, matters. Like I said, there's, there's, if, if it's just one big project, there's different way, way you do it. But because it was a daily process, people didn't understand the software. This was uh, the way we had to go, yeah.